So actually, it's a very big pleasure to Welcome. welcome uh, Nelson Brizak. And um, it was actually, I think, my suggestion at a certain point. And I was reminded of the work of Nelson precisely because some 10 years ago, I was uh, exploring this idea of doing an exhibition about urban culture coming out of Brazil. The name was Urbanorama Brasil. And, um, and of course, I, as I started investigating what was happening, what kind of artistic expressions were taking place in contemporary Brazil, I immediately came across the project that uh, Nelson Brizac was uh, already um, uh, directing since 1994, uh, I believe, right. in Sao Paulo, which is called Art Cidade. So it's a project that actually was uh, researching uh, these missed spaces in the city and bringing uh, artistic intervention out of the museum and into those spaces that were sometimes abandoned buildings, infrastructural interstices uh, in the city, vo urban voids, uh, like we uh, normally call them in our discipline of architecture. So spaces that had had been discarded in the evolution of the city to investigate how uh, artistic practice not only mushroomed in these spaces in different forms, but also uh, inviting artists to interact with those spaces. And that was mainly the characteristic of this project along the years. Uh, Nelson was just telling me that uh, the project has now changed into a new phase, and I'm sure he will be talking about it. And just also in the way of introduction to let you know a little bit more about Nelson, and I think it will be interesting also to understand how this biography then relates to this context of urban uh, culture. Nelson is actually has a doctorate in philosophy, I believe, from the Sorbonne, and is uh, a teacher in digital uh, technologies, digital in, um, intelligent technologies and digital projects at the uh, Pontificia, Pontificia? PUC. PUC, University. <laughs> Universidad Católica, right. so the Catholic University in uh, Sao Paulo. <coughs> so there is this mix of digital culture, philosophy, um, new urban expressions, which I think is a really rich, rich mix. Gives you freedom <laughs> to, uh, to go from to one part to the other. many senses. <laughs> and I think that will obviously come out in the description. Uh, that Nelson will be making of this important project. So, please, Nelson. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Thank you all. It's my pleasure to, to be here and to have this opportunity to exchange ideas about the project. Also because uh, w what I'm trying to, I will try to, to bring to you is not exactly a presentation about the former projects, but questions about public art or the relation between art and the city, um, taking in account the huge mutations that are going on in urban spaces lately, um, in all cities, uh, I suppose, and not only in Brazil. And uh, this poses new challenges to artists and curators. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, that is the main um, subject I would like to discuss to you. We are living in a critical moment of changes, and this poses um, uh, the necessity of um, uh, new strategies to work in the city. And uh, also, it's clear that the old strategies are not working anymore. So um, uh, the, uh, uh, it's a moment of um, surprising astonishment from artists also, uh, that are experienced, that used to work in the city. So uh, my, my idea is that uh, large scales do it to, to the grow, the fast grow of the cities and political tension, social tension, has changed uh, the way people 
understand, perceive, visualize art in urban spaces in a way that uh, uh, demands new kind of uh, approach. So the first, the first idea is to discuss the, uh, the individual perception and experience as no longer the basis of the artistic intervention in, in, in the city. When we are used to relate one thing to the other. Um, Sao Paulo is not anymore a pedestrian city. You, you cannot walk in the city anymore. Not because this is a um, it's like Los Angeles. It's not, it's not because it's an automobile uh, city. It's just because the the uh, the urban space became tensioned, uh, disrupted by several kinds of occupations, and, uh, you, and the design of the city is largely disorganized by this kind of um, uh, transformations. So, so the idea of how you you located it yourself in the city becomes a problem, even for people living there for uh, all the time. So, um, if you, I, I know I have to go fast. This this is downtown São Paulo, uh, uh, for 50 years ago, uh, has a recognizable design. Uh, a French garden in, in the center. This is the same space now. So this kind of um, look at the scale of the, that the city took uh, in few years, more or less few decades. So uh, to 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 approach the city as a as an artist as an architect, you, you have to understand this. First of all, uh, 20 years ago, we did this kind of uh, uh, interventions. This is a photographer that used a very strong light projector crossing a bridge. So he will discuss the idea, of the Baudelarian idea of crossing a moment of revelation and, and, and being located in the city for a, just a, a second before uh, uh, going uh, on in darkness. Dr. Lacaz made a periscope. So you, you would see uh, this is a, a, a 28 meters high. And you see the same scale. Looking down, you see the top of the building as face to face in the same <coughs> scale. Uh, discussing the idea of uh, perception and the use of uh, uh, equipment uh, of perception. Regina Silveira, you must know, one of the most mm -hmm. important uh, Brazilian artists, ha has always the idea that the, the, your position in space is. Uh, a, a matter of um, dislocation. So uh, it, 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 always a point of view. In fact, what we are seeing is a flat, uh, a flat space, and then everything is drawing as the the sensation of uh, falling. But it's just a drama, like this. Paulo in the 60s and, and now. So uh, th this is occupations under the infra infrastructure. We've been working a lot about this kind of uh, uh, different uses in the city of the infrastructure. It, 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 it's built in a metropolitan scale to go from one far place to the other, but locally is occupied by different kind of people that gives another use to the infrastructure. The polarity is one of the most uh, common aspects of cities in Brazil. 
this Viro Conchi made this kind of um, um, emergential um, equipment for homeless population. So it's built under the, the highway. What you see in the top is an expressway. What year was that? That was in 2002. There, there was a BNL project. No. Right? No. no. Right? I don't know if it was at the same time. It must be it. Yeah. It's like I remember seeing it. Yeah. So uh, uh, it, it, it was designed as a, as a collective space, was there for two months, and was occupied, uh, and was the, the, the whole maintenance was made by the by homeless people themselves. As you know, it's an extremely difficult situation because social uh, contacts among those people are very difficult to take. So a country was very, has a lot of courage to, to work in a very, very tense situation. Is it, is it still existing? No. What was a, the, the whole idea of what study was is always to develop some kind of prototype of urban policies or urban solutions that, that are not made to, to, to be permanent, are, are concepts that we negotiate with the city in order to see if they, they keep the idea. In this case, for, for instance, the, the, the city hall was interesting in the idea, but they wanted to make under their control the entrance, the stay, and the, the, so what Conchi said, no, I'm out of that. So if you want to do, you do. And, uh, and at that time, at the same time, there were a lot of uh, People carrying things, uh, uh, push cars. Push cars. <clears throat> this is very usual, especially 10 years ago. So Vodisco made a, a, a special project to them. Um, this was interesting because it was the first time in the technological, a kind of MIT, Sao Paulo MIT, <coughs> the, the equivalent. They developed the, the prototypes, two prototypes for that. It was the first time those engineers work with artists and those uh, pickup uh, people uh, cooperative. I, I, I was actually very, they, they had a special design position. And <coughs> this is the final prototype. The test drivers and, and how did this design improve upon what was already being used? No, the idea is that uh, made the way made in in in, in, num in large numbers, it will be less expensive than the actual sheriffs they use. So, but the negotiation with the city hall was very difficult because they would always say, "This is not, this not doesn't not fit in the traffic codes and regulations <coughs> and everything." So it was um, also art comes to 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 make the point that uh, we need to change laws and regulations and, and everything. It's never. Good solutions never fit what, what is established as, as the urban codes. As this project that is, was made with the, um, this, this is an informal market selling all kinds of things and occupy completely the, the public space as you see. This is a, a square, actually. and. Um, this is very usual in, in, in Sao Paulo, but mostly in Northeast, as you've seen in the city program. So we, at, at that time, we did, 
th those two artists, they made a, uh, an experience of uh, making TV spots with, uh, with them, with the vendors, and they will present themselves in a language that they suppose would be a TV commercial. And uh, that would be shown under that, uh, the tents. was a very interesting uh, relation with the um, formal media, access to the city through the formal media. So the public television channel show for, for two months, show the, the, all those spots, and uh, was a, a, actually very shocking. People see on TV, people Present, presenting lives and products that are not usual. You, you, you do not usually see on, on TV. Uh, television is the most important uh, social and cultural mm -hmm. instrument in Brazil. It's extremely strong. So, Cássio Vasconcelos is a very well-known photographer. And uh, the discussion was how, how to approach the city. Sh can you see the city from the top down? Aerial views are the solution when you cannot record, when you cannot uh, locate yourself by walking. So this is a very strong discussion we are having there. How to look if you cannot see. The, the, this, this reminds me of a discussion Robert Smithson and Serra had. You know, Serra is against being, uh, looking at his work from above. Uh, and Smithson and did a lot of the, those. You know, the, they had a very interesting debate about uh, if aerial view uh, disrupts uh, uh, the art experience. <coughs> Giselle worked with with those. He would pick up the graffitis and made them through uh, this this kind of advertising uh, systems. This is a, an area of, with traffic jams. So you would, with your phone, cell phone, you would program the, 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 the outdoor announce from, from your car. That <laughs> was an interesting thing. <laughs> uh, 10 years ago was technologically uh, very difficult to do. Armella Gross uh, working with the idea of um, uh, her uh, announcing herself in the city. A big, uh, al always, always uh, using very large. Um, this is for sale, just in case. <laughs> This is, was a time when uh, privat, uh, privatizations, the, the, the privatization, yeah, privatization of, of all train companies, for example, oh, no, I to that. sell. That was what it was about. Yeah, everything is to sell. Even the biennial building she did. <laughs> <It's all laughs> <For sale. laughs> uh, those are the. Uh, in between spaces, we, we, we negotiate a train with all these wagons uh, th that will bring people from, from place to place. And, and th that was a special, we made a um, research on the Russian 19, the beginning of the Ru Russian Revolution. They had a lot of projects for trains. The idea that the train would be a moving museum. So um, uh, we, we 
pick up all, all those the painting they did, and we made a kind of a reinterpretation. Laura Vinci with the time, a kind of ampulette. Nelson Felix disrupts um, the archi architectural condition. I mean, the, the, he cut it the, the top floor and put it down. Yeah. What, what building was that? A, an abandoned, was that building? Right. Right. This building. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is another, in another year, he did the same thing. He cut it, the pillar, the, the suspension, and put it, I still play in, in the place. This is the, this is the part of the, very difficult to do. <coughs> São Paulo has two, uh, thirty thousand uh, train wagons abandoned along the tracks. São Paulo State. So it's a huge quantity of waste. And uh, it's, it's very difficult to remove them because they don't they don't go anymore. They have they must have be dismantled and transported by another train or truck in order to take them out. So the, the this discussion we made this is the publications. This was last year. So we, we worked with uh, sculptures, José Rezende, in order to make experiments with them while we were removing them. Also, he would make it this, this kind of uh, indication. We worked with several experiments in engineers. very impressive because this has 46 stones each one and they are kept in that position in balance through this iron cable and the, and the whole thing has to be structured inside in order not to break because this is not made to, to be in that position Like using the materials of the city in large scale sculpture, right. which is pretty unique. Right. So instead of bringing something to the place, working with things that are in the place. So th that that's one of our main goals. Where is that in the city? Is it a peripheral area, or is it a place where other trains will go past and people will see it? Or? Yeah, well, the, the São Paulo was a, was a very industrial city, and uh, the whole city was organized along the tracks, like Detroit or Chicago or everything. You know, the, the industry will use the train to, 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 to um, transport the, the products. Mm -hmm. So São Paulo is not industrial anymore. All, all the factories move up move out the city. So what they are doing now is to make a, other tracks outside the city. And those huge spaces are empty now. So what will happen to them? This is a whole discussion. It's, it's extremely strategic discussion. We're going to make them public space or the, the usual
usual solution will be the market will occupy and build huge towers uh, as usually happens in those spaces. So there is a war over those spaces. Who is going to, to who they're going to be dedicated? This is very public. And this is up to the city or is it up to the state? Is the the, state uh, uh, it's a mixture. It's a mixture because the, the, the federal government owns the trucks. Oh, the federal too. Yeah, and the city has owns the land. So it's a, so so it's interesting to see that uh, a a culture project was a way to discuss uh, actually uh, 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 urban policies. What 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 how the urban development of those areas will go on. So the publication is is a presentation of several little numbers and has urbanists talking about, has a, the artist himself, the, the engineers, and a photograph essay. On How would you relate this situation with uh, the situation here of the High Line, which was also using existing tracks to yeah. produce a, a different kind of gentrification, but also but, yeah. Connected to that one. Yeah. And here you're like in a previous phase, still considering. Yeah. People, people there because of uh, the neocon. Mm -hmm. We all also have a huge uh, aerial um, infrastructure. Infrastructure in discussion over there. The problem over there is that it's bigger and is in use, which is different than the high line that was abandoned. So it was easier here to, to, to take out, the, to, to, to reuse the equipment. There, they, they will have to have solutions for the traffic in order to, to, to make this change. Yeah, and one must say that the Minyal Khan is like, a, some of you know, it's a large uh, highway, raised highway, a which is four, a viaduct, 14 kilometers long across the city. So that's what's in the discussion. And the worst thing that it goes through nice old neighborhoods, uh, changing completely the use of it because it, they became much more hostile, the, the environment, because of the cars and noise and everything. Well, uh, one landmark was the, the big manifestations last year. June last year, we, we had several days with huge, very big manifestations all over the country against all, all previous political positions. So it, it changed completely the political picture of the country, bringing other questions that were not the usual questions that means not not demands for raising salary raising yeah. revenue not not more those kind of uh, demands but access to the city that that was the basis of all manifestations mobility that that means being able to go to places in, within the city so it's, it's a, that millions of people will come to the streets with this kind of demand is very surprising. And that also changes the nature of maybe the artistic response, right? Exactly. That that that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. This is the this is an extremely famous picture from Nija Media uh, uh, that the occupation of the the Congress the in Brasilia, the, the government palace, the Congress. I, I'm sure the first time in history that happened. 
Is this arguing for um, free public transport, tariff or yeah. yeah, right. Uh -huh. right. So mobility has to do with the cost of transport and also the where the transport takes you also. The discussion about lines was the first time the, we, we had a discussion where the subway station must be built. To who? Where the line should go? To the, to the middle class neighborhoods or to the poor neighborhoods? Who decide that? But also now with the football championship, it becomes a discussion about where you invest in terms of infrastructure. Exactly. infrastructure. Yeah, exactly. So the, the, the Brazil is the country of football. And actually, there is a huge debate about it is worth doing a World Cup there where the money should be invested in schools, hospitals, or stadiums. So, it's a very interesting <coughs> moment. This is the new project. I don't know if I'm, I'm out of time already. We have a, we have a uh, two more minutes? And you have 15 more minutes. Th this is the, after Art Cidade, we are working with this kind of, with this project, it's called uh, East Zone, ZL, Zona Left, East Zone Vortice. The idea is to imply, to, to put in discussion a very large scale of the city as a challenge <coughs> for visualizing, understanding. Uh, so we, we have a part of this area in the east zone, that is this part over here. Sao Paulo has 10 million or 11 million inhabitants. This part is 400,000 inhabitants. So the idea to develop a project for that area. What kind of an area is that in terms of a class and accessibility? And That's the problem. It's a, what we call dorm area. People live here and work over here. So public transportation every day takes one million and a half people in the morning to the to downtown and take back at six o'clock. One million and a half people just to work. They say we have to move the entire Montevideo, that's capital of Uruguay. <laughs> <laughs> And bring back every day is is impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. It will never work well. No? But this is what they do every day. So the idea is how can we change this situation? How can we irrigate this area of with activities, creation, um, in, in, uh, commercial activities and everything in order to people to live there and not to, to move to work out, out of there all the time. This, this is an example of very fast growth of the city. Until the early 70s, the city will go until here. So just you to see the scale, this is the last Arcidade, 20 kilometers. And, and now the area we are trying to work on. So basically, uh, spaces like that. This is very near to the river. So when, when there is a lot of rain, there is floods all over the area, like that. Literally underwater. <coughs> so again, the occupation of infrastructure. 
using the, the Virtut as a, uh, a house, actually. Look at this. Is this understood as a favela or not? As a what? The, favela. It, more, more or less. Sometimes yes, sometimes not. But basically, that area has very few favelas. They are informal settlements. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, we brought Ren Kohas over there, and he was astonished with this phenomenon. You see, two floors under the hill, kind of a whole city, selling things and everything, commercial area. So, also, this is the World Cup stadium. The opening of the cup was there. So huge works, public works are done in the same area. Very conflicting because it opens a kind of uh, empty, huge space in contrast with density over there. This is the last occupation, uh, the homeless movements. This is 4,000 families uh, occupying an um, um, area very close to the stadium. And they are very organized politically. What's the, what are they called in Portuguese? Saint 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 uh -huh. What was in the area prior to the stadium? Was it also informal set settlements like this? Or what, what they, prior to the... Prior, they used to have, but now this is a those kind of occupation are a political instrument to bargain new uh, homes. So the leader that is a, is one of my colleagues from the university. Uh, he, he he went to Brasilia to talk with the president because they were extremely afraid of huge manifestations the day of the, the World Cup will be opening. Well, that, that was a very tough situation. See, the occupation. The stadium is just behind us. Have you started already to bring artists to respond to these situations? That, that's the, I, I, I will strongly recommend you. We made a, a first forum um, inviting artists, architects, and many people to, to talk about Sao Paulo now. You, you can access the videos. It's like TED, uh, 20 minutes presentation of each artist. What, what, and it's interesting if you see very important Brazilian artists talking about public spaces now, like Regina Silveira, Carmela Gross, Fajardo, many of them. What struck me that everybody will say the, basically the same thing. Public space is too hostile. We cannot do anything anymore. It's impossible. And it's impossible for two basic reasons. The, uh, first, the city has, ha, because of the fast growth, the city received a lot of people from the northeast, from other areas, with different cultural background. So people don't share the same, the, the same reference, cultural reference, the same history. People don't recognize themselves in the same monuments or same artworks and, and everything. To who you are talking to? This is the basic uh, question. Second, life in the city is very aggressive, more and more aggressive. So you, you, you do something, this thing is, will be destroyed in 24 hours. So how, how you deal with this fragility? How 
art can respond to that. So um, I, I, I think I, I, if we have challenges, um, uh, first of all, they, they are they go through the, that, that direction. This is one. Second, how artists can renew their own process of production, creation, how they can deal with not only with with a different kind of public and situation, but the way they work, how they work outside their studios, how they work in conditions that are not under control all, all the time, what, what kind of new process or new materials they, they could use to, uh, they could, they could uh, take in, in account in order to, to better. So, so another, another line of investigation, just to finish, another line of investigation is the relation of art and industry in Brazil. Brazil is becoming a industrial platform of basic industry, mining, steelworks, and things like that. So will the artists take advantage with this new situation, what they can do. If you, if you see history of minimalism, that, that was always the, 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 the question they were, they, they were putting. How to, to deal with new material and new industrial process? At the very moment, Richard Serra is, is understood as a most important American sculptor and everything. He doesn't do anything here anymore. So, so uh, it's, it's hard to understand how, uh, as an art producer, he will have followers here. You don't have the, the industrial plants anymore. He does the thing in, 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 in Germany. So, so um, globalization has this very strange uh, effect, displacing the way people can um, uh, have access with their own ways of producing um, their works. So th this is an interesting. Thing. Robert Smithson is a mining artist. We, we usually we don't take this in account, but uh, he he was basically interested in mining process, and um, and uh, Brazil now is dealing with this huge mining, uh, uh, very very big in environmental problems because of uh, the the mining activity. So, what ha art has to do with that? So we are, we are also uh, working with the idea of canteiros, chantier, how, how you call that in English? Kind of uh, co collective uh, canteiros, canteiro de trabalho, obra, canteiro ah. de obra. A place where you, you, you build things in the city. Uh, you, you building site? Building site. Um, yeah, it would be workshop. that. Yeah. Collaborative. That, that, that comes from the medieval like where history. You're working. Like a guild. Where you're building. Yeah. Oh, it's a building yeah. site, right? Yeah. Yeah. Computer with, job. Yeah. With, with this the relation between the architect and and people who, who actually do things. The design and the production. Digital fabrication is a very important new way of uh, increasing our ability to develop new, new design and new projects. Uh, and it's a cheaper uh, technology. So to explore this is, 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 is also a, a new... A new uh, opportunity for artists.